Guardian NZ Ad Week in New York, and I'm speaking to Rob Schwartz, the Global Creative President of TVWA, and Andrew Oldham, producer of The Rolling Stones. Now, I saw your session earlier, and I, I asked a couple of people I know in the music industry, what, what should I ask you? And one, one, one of my friends said, does 2013 look like the early 60s to you? Meaning that in the 60s, kids bought singles, and now with iTunes, we've come full circle, where it's a singles culture and not an album culture. Do you see any sort of... Oh, no, there's, a, there's definitely a parallel there. It's just, um, you, you, they don't, it's just a shame that everybody has to make the equivalent of the redundant album and then have a single pulled from it. Whereas in the days when we made singles, you were on a sort of probation with the record companies. You'd make a single. If you'd been a good boy and it sold a little, you were allowed another, then an album. But now everybody needs to express themselves <laughs> right. for 48 minutes to find three that might work. And so are you a uh, big fan of the album still? What, what's the future of the, album, of, what? of the album? No, I really don't care. You know, I mean, uh, I like them because now with the eyesight going, you know, I could read them. <laughs> you know, I mean, you can't, you, you know, to get data, but it's only a memory and memories are just that. And do you still do you still see uh, Jagger and, and Richards no, or you don't? No, when, when would no. you last have, have seen them? I, the last time I saw Mick Jagger was in Buenos Aires in 1994, and we had a great conversation. He said, "Hello, Andrew," and I said, "Hello, Mick." So there's not there's not the odd uh, Twitter direct message or, or, or I only am with Keith. With Keith? Yeah. So it's, it's tough to revisit the. Hey, no, it's no, it's not tough at all. It's just the train keeps going, and if you're not on it, your ticket doesn't get punched. Right. Or there's no reason to be on the train. So is it, it not acrimonious towards them, just in not terms of all. what happened with, no. was that Ab Abco, was it? Is that where? Was that Abco? <laughs> no, is that, is that where well, it all stands? That's a very stands? good one for Times Square. Um, was it? No, it's just life as it happens, you know. Um, you, you know, you go where you want it. Now, um, they've signed for BMG, I saw the other week. What do you make of that? Or well, they've signed a deal for the, the music, for some of the rights, Is this for the Financial Times, or what? <laughs> BMG is very interesting, because the the Rolling Stones make so much money um, in uh, when they do concerts and when they do tours, that they suddenly realized that, um, that nobody knew how to uh, collect um, new leaves from old trees. So they went to BMG. Is it, a, is it something you would approve of? You... Oh, I definitely approve of it. I thought I heard you say in the in the session that um, you don't, you, you you said music companies were redundant. Is well, that no, right? Except I... their one job, they're, 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 they're redundant in terms of like if a new musician is going to go and enter into one of these 360 degree things, I think that's a waste of time. Um, but if you're an old artist and uh, you com you're commanding the respect from a record company that they will pay you what they've collected for you, then it's well worth it. Well, I, th I think just on that Jumping. point, I, th no, I think it's... Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> one of us hangs with the rock stars, one of us was a rock star, you know, there you go. Um, but I think one of the opportunities for, for brands now is to replace the record label. Because, you know, kids today, artists today, they've got all the tools to get the songs, to make the material happen, uh, and sometimes they just might need a, a sponsor, a benefactor. And I think that's where brands can come in. Do you think that's also the rise of social media? Once upon a time, you, you had to go to a, a label. Uh, you had no route to audience, so to speak. But now with social media, half the time they, they come really packaged, selling T-shirts, yeah, they've I got mean, followings. Social media think... is the advanced man. You know, it seems like uh, you don't need uh, you know your guy in Cleveland because Cleveland comes to you. Right. So in terms of shows like X Factor, for example, where do you sit on these sorts of things? Where the music industry's gone? These sort I of don't instant think the music pop industry's makers. Got, I think the music industry is making a huge mistake thinking that it's got anything to do with it. To do with these shows? Yeah. It's it's like we work nine to five, we want to escape, we want to be entertained. Well, you had an image up there of Harry Styles uh, in the session, I mean, of Harry Styles next to, to, to Mick Jagger. It is a, an uncanny resemblance. There is something, uh, as I saw it, that this five member band, One Direction, is a lot like another five-member band that was extremely successful. And I think the Harry Mick thing, to me, I, it, it, was, it was inescapable for me. So I think somebody looked at a pretty good blueprint that somebody had written here and said, hey, that one worked, maybe we can redo it. They're obviously quite a big quite a big uh, band now. Uh, is it are possible to, well, what, what are they, act? What do we call them, act. an act? act. Okay. <laughs> is it possible to, to now in the, in the modern 
modern age to reverse engineer like that? Can, can you go from this marketing concept and then create yourself a product which is believable and will sell millions? Is it is that a credible model? It's always been a very big part of, you know, but I mean, what the, the, the questionable part is the shelf life. Right. I, I mean, I think and do they have one? Do we think? Right. And they're making a movie, usually that's the end. <laughs> well, they have made a movie, haven't they? Yeah. I mean, you ask about, <laughs> you know, does, is, is the blueprint relevant? I, you know, I found uh, Andrew in my world because running a creative enterprise in 2013, we're trying to create hits on behalf of clients. And our world has turned upside down. And I think in some weird way, I was looking for wisdom. And I think that, uh, you know, when you think about what Andrew had done with the Stones, this was a creative enterprise. These were, this was a creation of hits. These were products that connected with people. And uh, frankly, I found that there were pieces within this world that we could start applying to advertising in 2013. Well, gentlemen, thank you. Thank you very much for your time. Oh, I really, really appreciate you. it.